Hey guys, here in another classic movie for you guys, and this movie we're reviewing, I have been so looking forward to watching this movie ever since it came out, actually. I've been wanting to watch it, but just never got the chance to till now, and, uh, of course, this is continuing my review of the Bond films, and that is going to be none other than the 2012 action thriller classic Skyfall, which I think, just like Casino Royale, is a classic. This is a movie that I could have watched back in 2012. I really could have. I mean, I had the Blu-ray, I mean 2013, I had the Blu-ray in 2013. I was gonna review for you guys and I just never did and I'm actually glad that I didn't why because I don't really think I'd know what I was talking about if I just randomly started watching Skyfall I just don't really think I'd understand the movie if I'd done that because I just I was younger and I was stupid and I didn't really understand and I'm still young and I'm still stupid but I'm a little bit wiser I definitely will say I'm a little bit wiser and I understand movies more now than I did uh two to three years ago. I mean, you guys have seen that. Probably progression from this. I hope you've seen progression from this channel. But anyway, um, you know, after watching Quantum of Solace, I was really looking forward to finally getting to watch this movie just because I was ready to get back to Bond. You know, Quantum of Solace was really disappointing. It was a bad misfire, but I've heard so many great things about Skyfall, and I was so ready for Skyfall to redeem the franchise, and damn did it ever because Skyfall I think is an absolute masterpiece and is literally right up there with Casino Royale. I mean this is a Bond film. This is everything that a Bond film should be. I absolutely love this film. There's so many great things about it. But let's get to the plot of Skyfall which by far is I think the most compelling uh, James Bond plot yet honestly and this was the 50th James Bond film. I believe it was the 50th. I know it was 50 years. I don't know if it was the 50th but I know that when this came out this was when the whole celebration of you know, the 50 years of Bond came out, the Bond 50 set had come out, everyone was looking forward to this because of that, and basically, the plot of this movie is that in the middle of the mission, James Bond ends up supposedly drowning, and we think that he might have died in the very beginning of the movie, but of course, he doesn't die. What he does do is take some time to possibly retire, and uh, he eventually is pulled back in, and he has to kind of get retrained and everything, but while he's pulled back in, someone is trying to hack into MI6, and obviously, this is a huge problem for M, who is kind of getting this bad reputation and everything, so they have to find the hacker and stop whoever is doing this from basically destroying MI6 and basically Bond has to come back for that. And that basically is, I think, the best way to sum up Skyfall. It's the most compelling plot yet. There are definitely a lot more things going on besides that, but let's get to the overall stuff of Skyfall that I really do want to talk about. Uh, excuse me. A lot of stuff. There's a lot of great stuff in this movie. There's so much to talk about, so let's just get into it because really, I mean, one of the best parts of this movie, I think just like Casino Royale, is the acting. Now, does this movie as good as a cast as Casino Royale? I mean, yeah, I think it does. I think it has pretty good casting, just like Casino Royale does. I don't think it has as good as a cast as Casino Royale, but it definitely has some of the best things that Casino Royale does, and there are a lot of comparisons. Although, this movie is very different from Casino Royale, which is something I do appreciate about the Bond movies, that no movie is alike. Every movie feels somewhat different. Casino Royale felt nothing like Quam Asalas, Quam Asalas felt nothing like Casino Royale, and Skyfall feels nothing like the previous. To. It's a much different movie, but that doesn't mean that Daniel Craig isn't bad, because this by far, I think, is his best performance of the three. I mean, he was just fantastic here. I really loved his portrayal of Bond, because at this point, he knows what he's doing. He knows that he's James Bond. He kind of gave himself some time to retire, but he's also a bit, you know, he also really knows what he does. He knows that the mission is supposed to happen first. He knows that the mission is what's most important, and I think one of those compelling parts of this movie is that Bond actually has to go through a lot of significant re training because a lot of people are worried because of the womb that he succumbed to that he's not going to be able to train anymore and he has to retrain all this stuff but you can see that he very much knows what he's doing and he very much sees how silly this all is and it's probably as you can tell he just he really knows this character he's having a lot of fun with this role and I think out of all the movies this is the one where I thought Daniel Craig was having the most fun he really did a great job here I really thought he was awesome and he really just gave it his all I mean he's just a lot of fun to watch but he also is obviously sleep you know, at times, very, not, again, it's not menacing is the word I'm saying, but he very much knows what he's doing. You know, he's an assassin, he knows what he's doing, and I definitely really like seeing that. I love seeing his character. He really was great in this movie, as usual. I mean, he's always great, but Daniel Craig continues to be great, and 
the difference between this and Kwame Solis that Kwame Solis, I think, while well, he traded, he didn't have much to work with, and here he had tons of stuff to work with because we get a lot more in depth with James Bond. I think just as in depth as we did with Kwame Solis, as not Kwame Solis, as Casino Royale. But we do get into his head a little bit more. We see some more of his childhood things like that, which I thought was overall really interesting. But overall, I thought Daniel Craig did a great job. He was definitely one of the best parts of this movie, as he has for the for, you know all three of these films, and he continues to just be fantastic. However, as good as he was, I don't think Daniel Craig is the standout in this movie. By far, the standout of this movie, and the thing I think that makes this movie so great, is Javier Bardem. Holy shit, this guy. I mean... This guy is crazy. If you want to talk about Bond villains, this guy, I think, defies all Bond villain traits, just like Mads Mikkelsen does. The difference between Javier Bardem and Mads Mikkelsen is that while Mads Mikkelsen was a very compelling villain, he's someone you could get behind. He's someone you could very much understand. He's also someone that didn't always seem like the bad guy. You kind of felt like he was in the right with what he was doing. This guy, oh no, this guy is dead set on destroying MI6. This guy is a merciless villain. He'll do do whatever he can to go after them, destroy them, and he's also a man that deeply challenges Bond, and you can see there are several times in this movie where Bond appears to be somewhat scared, and it's really interesting to see, but Javier Bardem, I think, is Oscar-worthy in this movie. He is fantastic, and you see that his main goal is to destroy MI6, and he's going to make sure that it's done. This is what he wants to do. He's going to complete, that's what he wants to complete, and just the lengths that he goes to, you know, complete this mission is really interesting. Interesting. He has this great scene where they're interrogating him, and he's giving this whole monologue about what he wanted to do when he was in prison, and it is this incredible scene that I absolutely love, but every scene he's in, he just sells it. He's one of those actors that begs you to keep watching, even when there's not a lot going on. Something about him is so interesting. I just loved everything about his character. He was so great, and even though he's probably the most menacing villain we've had yet, the reason he's so great is because he really does scare Bond, and Bond is kind of challenged by him. He's not really someone he's dealt with before, and I really think he did a great job. You know, they've never really dealt with a hacker before. This isn't someone that Bond can just kill, you know, that he can't just do that, because this guy has a bunch of people working for him, and I really did love seeing that, and the difference between him and Mads Mikkelsen is that Mads Mikkelsen, he wasn't the head of it all. Javier Bardem is the mastermind behind everything, and he really did a great job. Real love his performance. For me, I think he truly is Oscar-worthy, and really, I think just ha hands down, one of the best villains in an action movie history. He really was fantastic. He, by far, steals the show, and he just had me watching, so he just kept me watching, and he comes in a little bit later into the movie, but I think it's all the better for it, because the less screen time he had, the more I wanted to see more of him, and he really did a great job, really loved what he did, and he really was fantastic, he was just incredible, and definitely, like I said, is the thing that kept me watching the most. But that's not to say that everyone else doesn't do a great job, because everyone else does. There's a lot more of Judy Dench in this movie as M. She has a much more significant role here, because she's trying to keep MI6 from going extinct. She's doing whatever she can to keep it open, because she's so worried that, uh, you know, this that he's going to succeed. That Silva's going to get away with this. That he's going to end up destroying MI6, and you really do see her determination. And that's something I've loved about M, is that she's kind of been used as, not really comedic, but more of a motivation towards Bond. You kind of see that even she... She is kind of losing hope in this movie, and I really love seeing her pull all those strings together. I also loved how much closer her and Bond are, you know, be before she was kind of like a mentor to Bond, and here she appears to be pretty much on the same level, and that's something I also love about Javier Bardem, is that he's kind of on the same level as Bond, he's just as smart as him, if not smarter, but M and Bond pretty much are like partners at this point. I really love the way they work together, I thought they were very great here. There's some really good additions here, though. We have Ray Fiennes playing this really great character uh, that's working with M. I thought he all Overall, did a really good job. I really love what he did in the movie. He definitely was very good. And we also get introduced to Q in this movie. If you don't know who Q is, Q is the guy that gives uh, Bond all the technology that he needs and all the uh, suits that he needs. That's why Bond didn't have any cool technology in the last one, because he didn't have a Q. And thank God for Ben Wishaw, who comes in, plays Q. He's so funny as well. He just has so many great one-liners, and that's something I really liked, is that even though this is a very dark film, it's by far the most fun of all the Bond films, and I really think he did a great job 
job. Really love what he did in this movie. Albert Finney comes in a little bit later, but he did really great. And then Naomi Harris as well as uh, Eve Moneypenny. She's someone I really do want to talk about. Plays this uh, field agent that's kind of working with Bond. It was kind of cool to see him train her because she's kind of in the same situation that Bond was in where she's trying to find herself and she's trying to find out if, you know, really what she's getting into. And Bond, of course, knows what he's gotten into. You know, he's done this before, but she really hasn't. And kind of just seeing Bond trained her, I thought was very interesting. I really did like seeing that. They kind of formed this relationship, and I like where that went. They never got too uh, romantic with it, because again, because of what Vesper did to him, he doesn't really trust women in that way. And you still see that characterization very evidently in here. And that's something I love, is that they really did show that even though he kind of wants to be with her, he doesn't really trust women in that way, that they're actually going to love him. You know, he doesn't really trust women after what Vesper did, and it's sad, but that's something I think Bond will always have as long as we have the Daniel Craig Bond, definitely. But that's, I thought, was a very well done, very well done, her character. I thought she really was great, and especially where she ends up at the end of the movie, was very similar to what ended up happening with Craig in the beginning, at the end of Casino Royale. Definitely, I thought she was really great. The entire cast here was great. Definitely a really great cast overall, and I think everyone really worked fantastic here. I think everyone really was great. Now, just like Casino Royale, another thing that really sticks out in this movie is the director, because for Bond, you need a director that really understands Bond. Unfortunately, the guy that did it, I think he kind of understood Bond, but he just, it didn't really feel like a Bond film, felt like a regular action film. Sam Mendes, though, this guy understands Bond. Now, does he understand Bond as well as I think as, um... Uh, I can't think of his name right now, but the guy did Casino Royale, does he understand Bond as much as him? No, I don't think he does. I think he understands Bond very well, definitely, but I don't think he understands it as well as, um, damn it, I can't think of his name, he's so good, I can't think of his name, uh, what was his name? Sorry, I, I feel like an idiot, I can't think of his name right now, uh... Martin Campbell does. Does he understand as well as Martin Campbell does? No, he. I don't think he's as good as Martin Campbell because Martin Campbell's just been with the Bond series longer. But for Sam Mendes, someone who hasn't directed Bond movie before, he did a pretty damn good job. He really understood Bond very well. The tone here is a lot different, though. This feels a lot more like a Mission Impossible film. And honestly, all the better for it. I really did like seeing that. There's a lot of hacker stuff that goes into this. There's a lot more going on with MI6. And it's a very character-driven film. And I, I really did like that. But it's also very action-based. It's very much like what I think Kwame Salas could have done if they had a longer runtime, where they can balance those two elements very well. And like I said, it's also a lot of fun. I think Sam Mendes brought a lot of fun to this as well. You know, it doesn't have to be all dark and gloomy all the time, even though there is a lot of dark stuff going on, such as Bond dying in the sense that Bond uh, might have died and everything, that whole thing that's going on. I think he definitely did a very good job. Really like what he did here. His directing was great. The screenplay here is so interesting. I absolutely love the screenplay. I thought it was just so interesting of what was going on. Um, it's such a compelling story as well because you don't know if they're actually going to be able to take down Silva. Like I said, he's a man that seems to be very keenly aware of what he's doing. He seems hellbent on destroying MI6, and he seems pretty much on the same level as Bond. And even I'd say, i go as far as say he goes as far as M. Like, he really knows what he's doing, and you really don't know if they're going to be able to, if they're going to be able to shut this all down, if they're going to be able to keep MI6 intact. And it's a very compelling narrative. It goes in some really good directions, but it's... It also is Bond, I think, fully understanding who he is and fully becoming that action hero and basically realizing what he must do. I absolutely love seeing that. I think they really use him to their greatest potential. And if, you know, if if uh, Casino Royale was an origin story, this is Bond as Bond. That's who, this is, this, that's the best way I can put it. Kwame Salas was supposed to be Bond. It wasn't Bond. This is Bond. This is who Bond should be. And... This two bomb was meant to be, and that's something I think was very good. The screenplay was great. Goes in some really unexpected directions, especially the climax, which was insane. Which, speaking of which, let's get to the cinematography, because the cinematography here, much like the first one, I have no idea how they accomplish most of these things. I mean, this is a movie that... Un now, here's the one thing that this movie does. There's a lot more action in this movie, definitely. Not that there wasn't a lot in Casino Royale, but they just take a lot more chances with this movie, because they know by this point what works and what doesn't work in a Bond movie. And Roger Deakins did the cinematography, probably the greatest cinematographer living right now. He is just a genius when it comes to cinematography, and he does so many great wide shots. There are just some really great scenes here. The opening train chase, I mean, is just insane. I'm sure you guys have seen the train scene, but it is incredible the way that that scene is handled. Uh, or the insane climax in this movie. I mean, there's a climax that involves this house and a fire, and I'm not going to 
divulge further than that. I'll get into that in the spoilers, but I really thought it was just so thrilling. I was so into it. I love what was going on there. I really was just so into everything that was going on when it came to the action, because the action is just so interesting. But again, it's never unnecessary. They only put the action when they need to, and that's something that this movie understood. Unlike Quam Solace, this movie doesn't have action every two seconds. That movie did. That movie never really had much of a plot other than an action, you know, this that was an action-heavy film. This is too, but it's also very much character-based, and I really did love that. I thought cinematography was very good. Roger Deakins did an incredible job. Let's talk about the score, because holy shit, the score. I mean, first of all, Adele saw in Skyfall. <laughs> definitely received, definitely deserved the uh, Oscar, you know, win that it got. And, uh, definitely deserved all the praise it's got, and probably, honestly, my favorite Bond song of all time. I mean, there's just something about what she did. The amount of effort and the amount of production she put on this track, the amount of effort on it, I mean, just, there's so much in this. It just feels so epic, and it's the perfect way to open up this movie, especially when it plays. I mean, the lyrics go so well with what's going on. Yet have I seen a Bond film that does it as well as Skyfall does, and I think she just did it perfectly. I mean, I mean, I love that song before, but after watching this movie, you will have a newfound appreciation. If you love Skyfall now and you have not seen Skyfall, you'll have a newfound appreciation for it after watching this movie because she did an incredible job. Adele truly is, I think, one of the best artists working today because she literally puts 110% into everything she's doing, and Skyfall by far is one, I think, the best song she's ever written. She was just incredible in this, so happy she won the Oscar for it, and definitely, I think, one of the best Spawn songs ever made, one of the best parts about this by far. If I had to have one complaint, which I'm not really going to, the only reason that I don't think this is as good as, as Casino Royale, because it definitely is just as good, the only reason I'd say it's not the best Bond film is because, unlike Casino Royale, I did feel the length here, just a tiny bit, a little bit, but the thing is, everything is so interesting that the editing didn't really matter to me. The editing I did feel wasn't choppy or anything, it was just I did feel the length for this one, and I think it's mainly because the first one has that three-act structure and this one doesn't, that I did feel the length just a little bit, but I was so into what was going on, I found the story so interesting, that I can't really complain. I think everything going on was so interesting, and now, guys, unlike Kwame Solace, I am in again to spoilers here, because there is a lot to talk about in this movie. There really are a lot of spoilers that I really do want to talk about. Mainly, all of the third act of this movie is a spoiler. If you guys have not seen Skyfall, which I highly recommend you do, trust me, guys, if you're let down by Kwame Solace, this movie is very slowly going to show that, you know, I mean, very quickly going to show that the Bond series is not at all fallen flat. It definitely is just as great as it was in Casino Royale, and definitely I recommend checking it out. Of course, if you guys haven't seen the way my spoiler reviews work, I will put the spoiler tag when the spoiler tag goes away. If you guys haven't seen the movie, I will give you guys my rating, and then you guys can stick around for the rest of the review, um, but let's get into spoilers right now, because there really is a lot to talk about. Now, I will say, much of what happens at the end of this movie, I kind of knew was going to happen. Why? Because of Spectre. I knew certain things that happened in Spectre, I knew the plot of Spectre, and there were just some things that I'm like, okay, that probably happened. Now, I wasn't sure if they happened, but I just kind of assumed that, okay, this probably happened. But let's get to that third act, because the third act of this movie is probably my favorite part of this movie, to be honest with you. I love the first two acts of this movie. I love seeing Bond having to be retrained and M realizing he doesn't need to be, and if he wants to go back into the field to let him. I love seeing him, all the conversations he has with Silva, I think it's just so great, but everything really is leading up to Skyfall, because the whole question is, what the hell is Skyfall? Skyfall, we eventually find out, is Bond's home. This is the home that Bond grew up in, and it wasn't really the best experience, and we kind of see he didn't really have the best childhood. Uh, Albert Finney's character comes into play here, who I really love in this movie. He was definitely one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, his character, when he comes in, I really love what he did here. Kincaid, I really loved him over Overall, he's the one that's looking after this guy fall estate. He knows that James Bond used to live here and everything, and he takes M there. This is where they have that final conversation between Silva and Bond. This is when it finally goes down, and it's interesting that Skyfall is where uh, he takes her, because this is his childhood home, you know, in Scotland everything, and he basically comes up with this very elaborate, uh, you know, basically elaborate stunt to get Q to leave this electronic, electronic trail for Silva to follow, and that's exactly what Silva does, because obviously they need a meeting place to end up with Silva, so that way he can take down Silva on his own, and you don't really know 
what he's going to do here. What he does is just insane because we see that together, Bon, M, and Kincaid, they set up this series of bloody traps throughout the house. And when Silva's men arrive, we see uh, that they manage to kill most of them. Silva arrives by helicopter and much heavier weapons. And Bon then sends M off so he through the secret tunnel. Literally just all brings all these gas canisters, starts lighting his house on fire. House goes ablazing and his house is gone. And I love Bon's line of, eh, I didn't like it that much anyway. That's Bon. Just the fact that Bon just said, I didn't like it much anyway. That's who Bond is. He doesn't care that this was a child home that he blew up. I mean, he took out some enemies. He did what he was set to do. He focused on the mission. That's all he cares about. He doesn't care what it is. He doesn't care as a child at home. And I think that line in general, that's Bond. Just that line of, eh, I didn't really care for much anyway. I thought it was awesome. I love that. But then you get to the ending because it's not the ending here. Everyone dies except Silva. Uh, Silva, of course, is still alive. He survives and he spots Kincaid's uh, torch beam, follows Kincaid and M to the chapel, and he forces his gun in M's hand. Now, M, mind you, is already wounded. She's already very badly wounded, and I love the scene where he's literally begging for her to kill them. It just shows how much of a coward that Silva is, but I didn't really take it as he's a coward. I took it as he's a man who will do anything he can to finish this job. This was what he wanted to do in life. His passion was to destroy MI6, and as crazy as it sounds, that's how I saw it. I saw it as his passion was to destroy MI6. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to make sure that that was gone, that it wasn't available anymore, and basically with MI6 failed, he he feels that he needs to die because he failed his purpose in life. His purpose in life was to do that, and he failed, and he doesn't have a reason to live anymore. It looks like she's going to kill him, but before she pulls the trigger, Bond comes in, stabs him in the back with a knife. That is totally Bond, and Silva does end up dying. I'm glad that he did kill Silva because there really wasn't any way to not kill Silva. I mean, Silva would not stop. He would do whatever he could to destroy MI6 and probably kill them as well. He would have done whatever he could to destroy MI6 and destroy everyone there and basically corrupt it as much as he could and I think he he does in fact stab him he's dead Silva's dead but M also dies which this I knew happened I knew M died I knew I didn't know if Silva died I honestly did not know that because I didn't know if they'd be able to take him down but M does in fact die um of this wound and everything and honestly it's it feels like honestly like Bond doesn't really need her anymore it's kind of how I took it that Bond doesn't exactly need M while he kind of needed M he doesn't need her anymore he's learned how to move on without her and especially I think that end scene really does show how much he doesn't need her because basically he goes to M's funeral and there's Eve Moneypenny right there who says that she doesn't want to be a field agent anymore from what he said to her they had this earlier conversation where he said it's very hard to be a field agent she realized it's just not for her she wants to now become the secretary for the new head of mi6 and basically that's what she's gonna do she's gonna become the secretary and then at the very end of the movie we see uh now Ra ray fine's character he's now taken over he's gonna be the new m and bond is already to go on his next mission he is and no longer has any sort of hesitation he knows what he's meant to do he knows he's meant to do he knows this is his purpose and he's gonna do whatever he can to fight this to, you know, continue to be an agent and, uh, do what he has to do. I love the way that ended. I thought that was very well done. I thought that was a perfect ending and perfectly sets us up for what Spectre is going to give us. But overall, guys, I absolutely loved everything about Skyfall. I think it's an absolute masterpiece. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Now, again, I would not recommend watching this first. I recommend you watch all of the Craig films before. Well, skip Kwamis Solace, honestly. You don't need to watch it. It's not even brought up in this movie, honestly. It's not even brought up. So that's something I like. That they made it seem, they, they basically erased anything that happened in Kwamis Solace and just didn't really talk about it because it didn't really matter. It didn't really do much of anything. Uh, you can not, you can skip that one, but watch Casino Royale then watch Skyfall, and then I think you're good, and uh, I highly would recommend checking it out. And just like Casino Royale, I'm going to give Skyfall the same grade of Casino Royale, which is, without a doubt, a 5 out of 5 or an A+. I absolutely love this movie. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Is it as good as Casino Royale? Yes. I think it's right up there with Casino Royale. I don't think it is better than Casino Royale, but I think it's right up there. It is an absolute masterpiece. It's another great film from Daniel Craig, and really does show, I think, what Bond is capable of, just like Casino Royale did. It's also, like I said a lot of fun it has all the elements that makes bond great and every and really does show what this franchise is capable of
So over guys, in my review of Skyfall, I am so happy I finally was able to watch this movie. Out of all the Bond films, this is the one I was most looking forward to, to be honest with you, because I've heard so many great things about it, and I'm so happy I finally watched it. I have one Bond film left, which of course is Spectre. I will most likely review that uh, tomorrow. That's the main reason I've been reviewing these guys, because I wanted to watch Spectre last year, didn't get, a, didn't get a chance to, and finally I'm going to be reviewing it tomorrow, and then I will go on to the Ghostbusters films. I know you guys want me to, but then after uh, Spectre, I will go on to Ghostbusters, and hopefully review that tomorrow, but let me know what you guys thought of this movie, have seen it, love to hear your thoughts on it, uh, how does it hold up to the other Bond films for you, I know some people say this is better than Casino Royale, if you, what did you think of Javier Bardem, what did you think of everything that went down, you want to talk to me about the spoilers, um, if you want to talk to me about spoilers, just put a spoiler tag there, so you guys can do that, but I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for this week of Big Brother 18, which boy is there a lot to talk about, and I will see you guys for that, okay, bye.